we take cuttings of plants so we can propagate those plants, so we can grow those plants on, so we can prune those plants, so we can take cuttings of the plants, so we can propagate more plants. It's insane. It's insane. No, it really is insane. Oh boy, we've got a real problem here. But we're not hurting anybody. We're not out at the bar. We're not getting drunk. We're just having fun, right? So let's go propagate some more plants. Alright guys, so we're back and through the magic of movie editing, it's like three days later. Something came up when I was recording and I had to get to that and in the meantime I've already propagated a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to show you that right now. Um, you guys have seen me propagate a ton of stuff in the past and take the actual cuttings. Uh, I did this just exactly the same as I did the petunia cuttings. I'll put a link up here to that video if you want to see how I did that. Uh, some of the some of the varieties that we took here are a little bit different but pretty much the same and I'll show you them right now. Um, also about these links that I'm putting up here and this goes with all YouTube videos right now. Uh, there's a little icon and it brings that bar up along the top up here. Uh, a viewer asked me the other day, Mike, wouldn't it be easier if you just put the link down in the description as well? And then after it passes that time frame where that link goes away, I wouldn't have to go back through the video and hunt for it so that I can go watch what you had linked to. Well, just so you guys know, probably a lot of you know this already, <clears throat> I went and put that, descript that link down in the description like he asked, but... It dawned on me later, all you have to do if that link goes away, there's a little dot up in the corner. If you click on that, it'll bring a drop down menu and that will be the link. Anytime through the video you can do that, there will be links to those videos that I put up there. So it makes it really easy. Just click the little dot and you can go to those videos at any time through the video. You don't have to hunt for it. But uh, so I'll put that up there about the petunia video, but I want to show you these guys right now what we took and what everything looks like. All right, so I'm back over here in the hoop house and I'm on the heat mat. I decided to go ahead and propagate these guys. These are little odds and ends here. I've got some, uh, well, I'll show you here in a sec, but I, I want to propagate these little odds and ends and I don't want to use my big frame for this stuff because that's safe for the rhododendrons. I do hundreds and hundreds of rhododendron cuttings in the fall and I, you know, I don't want to use it up with all this kind of stuff, but I do like a few different varieties of plants and I want to propagate some in this little setup, make it real easy. Uh, oh, by the way, if you guys saw that last fig video, if you're into these figs, there's that big fat guy. It, uh, it kind of, its leaves drooped over a little bit the first day, but it's starting to get reacclimated and it's looking real good, um, growing on real nice. So if you, uh, want to see a video, the video where we found that guy growing out in the manure pile, just click the link up here. I'll put a link there for you. But, uh, back to the cuttings all right so let's take the lid off here boy that's toasty in there all right so like i said i've got odds and ends of things that i do like aside from rhododendrons and do occasionally take now these guys right here i actually found i was at a, a big grocery store and uh they had some you know they've always got landscaping around the parking lots and there was some rows of sharon that were blooming beautifully and i just grabbed a couple little snips of them and uh, was bringing them home to propagate. These, we'll see how they do. They actually sat in the fridge for, these Rosa Sharon actually sat in the fridge for about a week. I took them and didn't have time to do anything with them right away. So they sat in the fridge for a week in a plastic bag and they're doing great. So anyway, I hope uh, they take off and that'll help some people if they need to store cuttings before they're able to actually stick them. We'll see how they turn out. And then, over here, or actually, let's go back over here. We've got the uh, Java Red White Jell. I really like those, and I took a bunch of cuttings off of the the Java Red White Jell that we had propagated last year. So you know, you with these little guys, these little deciduous shrubs, you could take cutting after cutting after cutting and just multiply these things like crazy. Uh, then right down here. We've got some yellow twig dogwood, and I really like yellow twig dogwood, so I wanted to, the, the one that I've got out here 
um, outside the hoop house. You've seen it before. It is actually, I'll just take a quick shot. It was in a pot and I set it out here and it grew into a gigantic tree almost here. It's taken up the whole walkway and I can't hardly get through there. So I'm gonna cut it down, but I want to take some cuttings in the meantime. You can see it behind the cedar. I want to take some cuttings in the meantime and make sure that I had the actual plant down the road. So I'm gonna chop that guy down, but we got a bunch of the yellow twig dogwood and those should root on pretty easily. And then we've got a bunch of the variegated Wigella and I'll show you a little clip here of those guys. But uh, we, we pruned them back and took all the cuttings and I stuck a whole bunch of them here. So I think I got like 12 of them. I could have probably got like 50 cuttings with all of them, but I really don't need that many. And you know, this is just for little odds and ends around here that I like. So definitely I had to have some variegated Wigella. Now, I just bought this variegated Wigella plant last year at a nursery in the fall on our family trip to Oregon and took those cuttings from it, ended up with 12 more in one gallon pots that filled out the pots by this spring and now I'm taking cuttings off of those so and I threw away most of the cutting material I just stuck 12 of them so like I said you guys can really multiply these things like crazy then over here I'm trying something new I've never tried before and this is the uh, pink dogwood we have a Cherokee Brave pink dogwood that is planted out on the landscape and I've never tried actual tree dogwood cuttings so we're going to try that this uh, year and see how they turn out they look okay so far and I've heard that you can propagate them as soft wood cuttings so we're going to take that out and then over here I've actually got a white dogwood white flowering dogwood I, I can't even remember the variety I bought it so many years ago and never left the tag on but beautiful beautiful big white flowers every year and then it looks absolutely gorgeous in the fall um it gets uh just a it turns so many different colors the leaves just turn beautiful orange and red and yellow and green and it's just a really pretty uh tree so i took a bunch of cuttings of them that's a white dogwood we'll see how they turn out i hope that a lot of these guys take off and then these are climbing hydrangea a friend of ours gave us these uh, hydrangea, gave us this little hydrangea. She pulled it out of the ground near hers and we just potted it up and I just took some cuttings off of it. They grow like crazy. And I wanna have a lot of these climbing up the big fir trees that are over, towering over the roadie. So it just keeps adding more green and lush to the whole area. So as you can see, this is that tote that I had the petunias in and it's got 72 cells in there. I think it's 72 total. I didn't fill them all in. I left just enough space here. We've got a little bit of spirea, gold flame spirea that I'm gonna do right along here on the edge. And if there was something else, there's some burning bush I might do. I got enough room for another row of something right down here. And then I decided, you know, the heat mat was available. I wasn't using it anymore. I'm just gonna stick it over the heat mat and see what happens. I've got it propped up here on these wood blocks so it doesn't get too hot, but it's actually plenty toasty down in there. And I wanna see if I can get some quicker rooting. Even though these are softwood cuttings and you absolutely do not need bottom heat for these guys. They'll root like crazy, but I wasn't too sure about the dogwoods and so the, the tree dogwoods. And so I thought, eh, let's increase our odds. So I, I put it on the heat mat. I've got the cover over it and we'll see how those turn out. Uh, let's go ahead and take the rest of those cuttings of the gold flame spirea and stick those guys. All right, so like I've said before, the, there's other plants out there that I like aside from rhododendrons, but I, I mainly stick with the rhododendrons, but I wanna keep cuttings of these guys going along the way. Now, gold flame spirea, that particular variety of spirea is one of my favorites. I just love the gold and flamey colors, the reddish orange colors that come out in the spring, and then the flowers that come later in the summer. Now you guys can look at this and see that they're neither gold or very flamey looking. And that is because I've had this planted out in a particular spot for probably six years, seven years now. And it's away from everything that I have been doing around here with rhododendrons and landscaping. And it's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. A lot of weeds and brush have grown up around it. And I'm gonna clear that entire bed 
It was something I put in years ago and never hit. I, it's totally been neglected. So anyway, this guy was hidden beneath a ton of brush and I want to save it. I'm going to wipe that bed out, but I want to save this variety. And so that's the really cool thing about plant propagation is, you know, this thing doesn't look that good right now. I found it way down in a bunch of brush, but it's got the genetics. It is a gold flame spirea. I'll be able to propagate it and the new little cuttings that come up when I pot them up will turn into beautiful golden orange red new growth in another year. So next year these should look absolutely fantastic. So let's go ahead and take these cuttings. So I've got some spindly, if you can see, I've got some spindly top growth up here and we really don't want the stuff that's going to be too spindly like that. I want this, you know, this is all this year's growth, but I want this tougher growth down here. It'll hold up a lot better. So I'm just going to snip that right off. We don't want that little spindly stuff. Uh, what I'll do here, I think, is come right below this leaf right here and snip that. And then I think I'll come, we'll take the top off of here, actually a little further. And then I'll come right below this guy and we'll take that off. And now we're going to rip that leaf off, rip that leaf, leaf off, and then snip this guy right down. So we've just got one little, one little cutting just like that. And these guys, you really don't need to, you can... You really don't need to scar this up too much. I'll just do one little portion right there. I don't know if you can even see that, but I just kind of skinned it a little bit. Really don't need to with this type of, of uh, material, but so that's a nice softwood cutting a gold flame spirea. And then I will do the same thing with this guy. We'll just take that leaf off and then this one. And we just got these two little guys up here. So we'll go ahead and just skin a little bark off of this, even though the growth is so succulent and soft, you really don't need to. There goes the cat. <laughs> um, so now there's two of our cuttings. I'm going to do this with the rest of them. We'll stick, uh, what's that going to be? Two, four, six, seven, maybe seven cuttings. And I'll leave a little extra room for some burning bushes, I think, down the road. So let's go ahead and get these guys finished up and stuck in the medium there. All right, guys, so you can see I already took the cuttings now. I've got them all here, seven of them, and I dipped them in some rooting hormone. Now about rooting hormone, I've seen people lately um, talking a lot about everybody's trying to be so natural, and I understand that. I try to be as natural as I can be, um, but the rooting hormone really does help your success rate. You can get a lot of different varieties of things to root without rooting hormone, uh, but you're going to get a higher success rate with rooting hormone. Um, the other thing that it does is most of these powder hormones have a fungicide in them and help prevent fungus and disease and things like that from forming. So, you know, either way, I, I don't think I'm killing the environment by dipping a little bit of uh, rooting hormone on these guys. Uh, if you just absolutely don't like it though, yes, a lot of these like this gold flame spirea and the white jello, they'll root just fine without rooting hormone. You'll just get a higher percentage of them to take root um, much quicker with the rooting hormone. And then also, I wanted to add, uh, in regard to disease and fungus and all of that, uh, sometimes people like to, I've seen people like to sterilize their equipment. I do not sterilize anything. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. I want to make a point here, but let's go ahead and stick these. So I'm going to stick these guys right in this manure. And once again, this is just that manure that I have available because I get it from a local dairy and it's just a perfect um, medium to plant in. Now this is composted. You don't want to use fresh manure, but this is a manure and shavings mixture that is made by the mother cows at this dairy. And once again, the only reason I'm using it is just because it's available. It's, it's free to me other than my time going to pick it up and it's just available. You could use any potting medium. It doesn't matter. You do not have to have this material. There's been some recent uh, comments and questions about whether this is working better for me because it's got um, animal urine in it, which I absolutely believe that might help out quite a bit because I've you know read and seen and heard that urine has been used for thousands of years 
to propagate plants throughout history. And so that might have something to do with the success rates. But before I had access to this stuff, I used potting soil and all kinds of sand and all kinds of other materials for years uh, in the past and had perfectly great success with all of that. So you don't need this material. Uh, it's just what I have available and it's free to me other than my time. So I'm just sticking these guys right in here. Another reason too that, uh, oh, I was talking about the sterilization. So I do not sterilize anything. Um, and let's make that point real quick. I'm going back and forth here. Oh, so in regard to the softwood cuttings, you see me sticking these guys right into that material and I don't have to worry at all about them bending or breaking. <clears throat> And that's another reason I don't like to use the real top growth because it's so it's so uh, just new and fresh that it wilts over very easily, one. And if you try to stick that in a medium, it doesn't hold up very well. It'll bend and break and you run into all kinds of you run into all kinds of problems. So I like to use a little the new growth, but a little bit tougher down lower here on the actual cutting. All right, so we got all these guys stuck. Let's talk about the sterilization issue. All right, so I see a lot of people worrying about making their cutting material and all of their tools sterile, perfectly sterile, without any bacteria or fungus or anything on them because they're so worried about disease and rot and you know getting to these cuttings. And I think that people worry about that way too much. I don't sterilize anything. When I first started taking cuttings, there was a time in the beginning where I thought I had to do that. And I would put potting soil in the oven and stink my whole house up. And I would boil water and pour it on the on the pots and things like that. And none of that is necessary. It's a complete waste of time. I want to show you something. So all biology, all life, our human bodies, plants, anything living is riddled with bacteria. So even if you were to completely sterilize a potting soil medium, a uh, your pots, and then dip this in some kind of a bleach solution, the inside of that cutting would just be filled with bacteria. Now, if you had a petri dish and you put just a little tiny bit of the inside material of this, if you swabbed the inside of that cutting and put it on a petri dish, even after dipping this in bleach, after 24 hours, there would be all kinds of colonies of bacteria growing on that petri dish. In just 24 hours, these cuttings sit here for weeks, sometimes a couple months. And so if you were to sterilize everything and it was perfectly sterile, there wasn't a speck of bacteria on it, as soon as you take those cuttings and stick them, within 24 hours there's bacteria all throughout that material. So I want to assure you, you don't need to waste your time sterilizing anything. Will it cut back on the likelihood that you'll get more success with your cuttings? You know, there might be a debate there, but I'm not worried about that. I never have a problem and we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how well these guys root and what kind of percentages we get. Now, the tree dogwoods are new to me. I don't know how those are going to take, but we'll show you how everything else goes here. Uh, also, in regard to that petunia video, didn't sterilize anything. Every single one of those petunia took and rooted well with no problem at all. So this material, this manure material that I have, chock full. There's probably more bacteria than there is material. <laughs> and so uh, I'm not worried at all about sterilization. I urge you to, to get that out of your mind, not worry about that, and don't waste your time trying to sterilize anything. So I think that's enough about sterilization. Let's go ahead and put the lid on this guy. All right, so we got all our cutting stuck, and like I said, I saved just enough room for some uh, burning bushes, and I'm going to put those in there, I think, uh, as soon as I get access to that guy. My dad has them growing up at his house. So as soon as I get them burning bush cuttings, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, put those in there. But otherwise, I'm just going to put this lid on, if I can get it on with one hand, and uh, within a few minutes, we'll have plenty of humidity building up in this little tote. 
I'm really liking this whole thing. It's the first year I, well, not the first year, but uh, I, I usually don't use this for propagation. I have another frame, uh, but this is just a small, compact, nice little way to do it because every one of these little cells individually holds its own roots and I don't have to separate roots all day long. It's a really nice setup. And we'll see where the bottom heat takes us. I'll uh, come out here, like I said, I stuck these, the rest of these cuttings about three days ago and these spirea are new. I'll get some burning bush more than likely put into place there. And we'll come back out and check on these guys. I'll show you updates on how they're doing and uh, how well they're rooting, the percentages we're getting, and we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys here uh, probably in a few weeks for me and a couple minutes for you or a few seconds for you. All right, guys. Oh man, guys, regretfully, I have to tell you, I cooked the cuttings. <laughs> we went away on a vacation to Ocean Shores, Washington, as I said in a previous video, and I made a massive rookie mistake. I forgot that the bottom heat was on and forgot to come out and turn it off before we left. And the temper, and I knew it was gonna get hot around here and the temperature got up into the 90s. And these guys were, I, I wasn't propagating plants anymore. I was baking plants in the oven. Anyway, let's see. So the, the uh, Wigella, they did just great. I mean, <laughs> they made it through all the heat just fine. They got kind of a darker tinge to them. They didn't like it too much, but um, some of these guys just got absolutely cooked, as you can see, unfortunately. Um, I think the buds in a lot of them are still okay. We'll see how things go. I'm going to keep them under this cover and just watch them. Uh, the Rose of Sharon, they really took a hit, but there's still a lot of nice green growth coming off of them. Some of the spirea made it. This guy got a little cooked here. And unfortunately, uh, I really wanted a lot of these climbing hydrangea to make it. And they got pretty fried. But we'll see. There's still some green down in there. And there's still a lot of nice... Uh, nice buds here so we'll see how those guys turn out maybe everything will work out just fine you never know you know with plant propagation it's a new uh, experience every time you you come out here and propagate so i'll keep you guys updated on how these go and we'll see how they turn out here in the end well guys it's been a few weeks and now that i've thoroughly nuked all of my cuttings let's take a look at them real quick and see what we've got left over after the aftermath of my destruction here all right so it's not as bad as i thought it was going to be and i've actually got some stuff that's working out okay i was a little bit disappointed here because i really want a lot of these high, uh, climbing hydrangeas to take but they really took a massive hit and they did not like that heat the built up in here so a lot of these guys are just died you know they're, they're just no no good but if you look real close I've got some leaves coming out of this one and the one right next to it so they're not rooted yet I don't want to disturb them too much I checked them once so I'm gonna leave those alone now let's look at the uh, dogwood <clears throat> and these guys take a little bit longer to root, so I'm kind of expecting them to not do a whole lot yet. Although, uh, that one's rotted, so that probably isn't going to take. I'm going to leave them in there anyway. Uh, there was one of them I pulled out, and it actually had some nice callus built up on it. But I think, I think I really... I really cooked these guys before. This one actually is pretty solid. It might have some roots, so I'm gonna leave it. And this one's a little bit more solid. So I'm just gonna leave these. I don't wanna mess with the with the dogwoods because I don't know if they've got roots or not, but uh, because of the fact that I cooked these cuttings, I wanna give them every chance that I can. Now, the one thing I am not worried about at all, and that is these Wigella, man. They, <laughs> they just stand up <clears throat> to anything. Let's just pull one of these guys out of the cells. And look at that. We've got roots, tons of roots. Look at that. All the way through there. So that's the variegated Wigella. Lots of roots there. And they've all got roots through there, I'm sure. They're all putting on tons of new growth. Uh, these are the other dogwood that I had. And they're, prob they're trees. They're probably pretty similar to the other ones, so I'm not going to mess with them. I've got the Java Red Wigella. And a lot of those guys got nuked. 
but uh, I don't think they have real good, there's a couple of them that made it. I don't think they've got good solid roots yet, so I don't want to yank them out because I'd like to keep them. There's only, I think, three of them that made it there. We've got the uh, yellow twig dogwood here, and they've got roots. And those guys are pretty easy to root. I mean, you could just about th take a cutting, throw it on the ground, and it's going to get roots for you. So the yellow twig dogwood made it through the little uh, the little uh, nuking session here. <laughs> and there's a ton of yellow twig dogwood. I wanted to make sure I got a bunch. I don't know why I took so many. They, they root pretty easily. And then we've got our spirea. Now the gold flame spirea I love and I really wanted to make sure I got some of that. And I thought I had killed it all, but they started popping right back and I've actually got quite a bit of these little guys with roots here. And you can see they're little guys and when they start off, I've rooted these in the past, they, they, they go kind of slow in the beginning, but then they just take off. But uh, we got some gold flame spirea there and it's gonna be just fine. You can see new growth coming out of this one right here. You can see a tiny little bit of new growth coming here. This guy's got some growth. So, you know, overall, I guess it wasn't that bad. Yeah, we kind of nuked them, we cooked them pretty good. We would have had better results if I were to turn the heat off, but you know, live and learn, stuff happens. That's just how it goes. Anyway, here real quick, I'll show you guys this. I took these the wrong time of year. But uh, I took them in the spring. These are some cuttings before I planted out the uh, Green Giant Arbor Vitae. I know there's a lot of people watching that thread because they want to plant some. But I took some cuttings and I ended up getting like 18 of them to root all throughout here. These are all rooted really well now. I'm just going to leave them in here through the summer and just keep watering them. And they're, they're actually, you can see, they're putting on some new growth here already. All these little lime green tops. And so I actually took them the wrong time, I thought. I guess it's the right time as well, but you usually take these kind of arborvitae or um, cedar cuttings, anything like that in the fall, late fall. And I took them in the spring before they started uh, really putting on growth, before they came out of dormancy. And they are just, they're, they're doing well. They rooted well. So maybe those guys are just a, an easier plant to root or I hit it at the right time for them. I don't know, we'll see. but. I got about 18 of them in there, and so I'll have more to plant along the edge of the property. But, yep, there we are. These guys, uh, you know, we got quite a bit of them, so I'm happy with that. Uh, it was a fun little experiment anyway. So I hope you guys learned something from that. Don't overcook your cutting. So I think when I had that bottom heat going with the 90, 95 degree temperatures going on around here while I was gone all weekend, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I... I that when I opened that container when I got home, it must have been. I felt warmth come out of there. That was probably 120 degrees. Who knows? It was. It was hot in there with the hot temperatures outside and then the bottom heat going. So, I mean, we really, really cooked them things. And as you can see, a lot of them bounced back. I don't know if rhododendrons would fare so well, but these guys made it so anyway i hope you learned something i hope you liked the video please like it if you did uh, comment if you got something to say about this subscribe if you want to follow along and have an awesome week i'll see you guys in the next video